we're beginning and I want to welcome everybody. Um, I think we'll probably have a fair number of people live streaming, so we've got that going on and welcome everybody that's watching on live stream. And let you know we're going to do a, a simple spoken service this morning. It's cold and there's a lot of COVID, so we, wanna, we, we do want to be together to worship, but we also want to get people in and out uh, quickly and safely. So welcome to everyone. Let's begin. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people. Let us pray. O oh God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity. Your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Greetings to our online community. A reading from the book of the prophet of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child, those in labor, together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock, and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let's pray Psalm 84 together. Alleluia, how good it is to sing praises to you, O God. How pleasant it is to honor you with praise. For you rebuild Jerusalem and gather the exiles of Israel. You heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. You count the number of the stars and call them by their name. Great are you and mighty in power. There is no limit to your wisdom. You lift up the lowly, but cast the wicked to the ground. We sing to you, Most High, with thanksgiving, and make music to you upon the harp. 
for you cover the heavens with clouds and prepare rain for the earth. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. When the wise men who had come from the east had departed, an angel of the Lord appeared to, Jer to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. I started thinking about this sermon, I mean even writing this sermon, between our services on Christmas Eve during that long, long, long time between the services. That time when children and adults on Christmas Eve gather to portray the truth of the nativity in tableau and to sing Silent Night and to, to feel generally good about the ending of a year that has been nearly catastrophic for some of us, for more than some in a lot of cases. A year in which 
we have struggled to hear the gospel proclamation over and over. And actually might well have heard it, have felt it, have known it somewhere deep inside for a minute. Then masks, quarantines, strokes, deaths, loneliness, grief. Back to the gospel, back to the good news. Back to the basics we go. And then again, back to the darkness of soul that we feel too often. Today, the first Sunday in the new year, we gather longing for a better year, longing for a year of cleansing and renewal and release from masked bondage. And we hear the prophet Jeremiah speaking for us. Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. And we say, yes, we can relate. Because it feels like I'm a part of that remnant. It feels like we are the remnant. It feels like we have needs, needs, needs. And we need to be saved. that we are that remnant, those pieces weakly making up a whole. The news for the whole that Jeremiah proclaims is exactly what we want to hear. The goodness of wine and grain and oil will shower upon us. There will be dancing and merriment. Mourning will become joy And perhaps most exciting, at least for me, I will give the priests their fill of fatness. (laughs) See, Jeremiah is telling us that the remnant will come, stumbling, lonely, crying, bereft, and they, we, we, will be relieved of the ugliness of our lives. And that's gospel. Right here in the heart of the Old Testament, that's gospel. But not so fast. Centuries later, all had not gone as promised, as as Jeremiah planned. Magi, those who were thought to be great and wise seers from a far-off land, had trekked to Palestine to find the newborn king that they and their wisdom knew to be there. Kings? Probably not. Three in number? Very doubtful. Probably more. But they traveled for what was probably many, many months. They found the child. And they fled. They didn't just go home, they ran home. At the beginning of today's reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, they run for their safety, they flee for the safety of the child. Now, Matthew ups his storytelling ante, ups it to nearly breakneck speed. An angel appears appears to the Holy Family and says, run away. King Herod wants to kill the baby because his throne is threatened. Run. So they hie themselves to Egypt and they stay there until Herod dies. Getting to Egypt is not an easy trek. It's a, a great distance away the Holy Family's own months-long pilgrimage to safety. And by the way, right here is where we learn about Herod's death. Right here in this sentence that encompasses many, many months, if not years. Then another angel, another angel comes and says, okay, it's safe, you can go home. And they return to Israel, but... The angel was wrong. It was not safe. 
Herod's son, Archelaus, is now the ruler, and he is as cruel as his father. Why has the angel sent them home? We have no idea. I suspect that Mary and Joseph didn't either. But they are careful. They are wise. They mask their lives against the government and go north to the Galilee, to the town of Nazareth, Nazareth. Joseph sets up a carpenter shop, and Mary mothers Jesus, and he is called a Nazarene. So what? The Holy Family is compelled to quarantine themselves from most of the world much of the time until they they finally get settled up north. They can't rest. They can't ever rest. They never get to feel like a place is home. They're never able to return to their normal, whatever it was. I guess it was the normal that happened before the birth of the Savior of the world. What happened to Jeremiah's? Their life shall become like a watered garden and they shall never languish again. What happened to that? I don't know how all of this sounds to you, but to me it sounds a lot like our lives in this here and in this now. Tossed and turned and pushed and pulled Isolated and diseased, hearing more and more stories of COVID infections, even in our congregation, and lonely and sad. But perhaps most of all, unsure what will happen next. Our Bishop Craig Loya writes to the faithful every week, And he almost always talks about the exhaustion of this time. Often I feel like he's not giving us a break. He's not letting us forget about the exhaustion of this time. And I want to. But when I listen with the ear of my heart, I know that our dear bishop is speaking love to every one of us the love that Christ the child brings to us, brings to us because his life was just like ours, just like 2020, 2021, and the first two days of 2022. And yes, he died. His life came to its ultimate end too soon and too brutally. But in our endings are our beginnings. T.S. Eliot's poetry teaches this profound truth. In Jesus' ending is our beginning. The life that is born into our lives is born so that all of the craziness through which we live might be sanctified might be made holy. The writer of the letter to the Ephesians understood all of this, all of this. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, hope. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? This Christmas, and always, God breaks into our lives and rebuilds in us the holy city, Jerusalem. God heals our broken hearts and binds up all the sore spots 
that sap the joy from our living. Exiles here in a land of too much sadness, we are given the pure essence of joy. And this joy even has a name. It's called Jesus. Amen. 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 We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Your spirit calls your church to rejoice in Christ's birth. As we gather at the manger, help us see your face in all babies needing comfort and care. Equip the church in the nurture and encouragement of all children. Merciful God, receive receive our prayer. The rocks and streams proclaim your praise. Attune us to the joyful sounds and groaning of your creation. Stir us to tend the earth wisely, that the whole earth may dwell in abundance and peace. Merciful God, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. Your messengers declare the joy to the world Embolden leaders and nations to make your justice and peace known throughout the earth. Uphold justice advocates and social service providers who risk their safety to help others. Merciful God, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. You choose those regarded as lowly to tell the good news of your love. Pour out your mercy and care on all who are sick, grieving, struggling, and the elderly who live alone, especially Ashley, Bill and Jane, Bob, Candy, Charlie, Dave, David, 
Don, Doug and Yvonne, Jack, Jan and Dave, Jane, Jim, Joanna, Kathy B, Kathy H, Kevin, Caitlin, Lynn, Marlis, Marnie, Mary H, Mary Fred, Maxine, Maya, Mike, Ralph, Renee, Rich T, Rich and Ann, Ron H, Ruth P, Ruth Ann and Tony, Sarah S, Scott, Sue, Ted, Theo, Tiffany, Tom, and Vicki. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You abide with your people in times of trouble. Accompany families and children who have nowhere to turn. Strengthen this congregation and local ministries in their care for those fleeing danger, abuse, or neglect. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Your grace and mercy extend to all. Give comfort to those who mourn and assure them of the peace you have granted those who have gone before us, especially Meredith Popoli and Jean Benton. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs> Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and, all, and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things, you laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst forth out of the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. You are wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts of your earth, your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ, dying you destroyed our death, rising you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of Christ of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ and in the fullness of time, gather us with blessed Luke and James and all your people into the joy of your eternal, true eternal home through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. This is the Lord's table, not our own. All are invited to receive the gifts of God for the people of God. May we who share these gifts be found in Christ and Christ in us. Let us, let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Kathy, if you'll come forward, we will be sending communion out to uh, extend our celebration to David and Sarah Summer.
Kathy, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share, share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. Go in peace. God is with you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.